welcome today we are going to learn structure and functions of typical prokaryotic cell before going into the details of the structure here we have few lines about prokaryotes this cells are simple structurally because here there is no nucleus and other membrane bounded organs so prokaryotic cells are simple structurally and also these cells are smaller cells compared with eukaryotic cells blue green algae bacteria and mycoplasma these are few examples of prokaryotes among these organisms bacteria are most commonly seen and grows very fast than any other organisms prokaryotes come in many different shapes but the common shapes are rods spheres and helices and sometimes we could also observe curved rod shaped and even flat surface cells observe here it is bacterial cell so if you observe few parts are interior to the cell it means few parts are present inside the cell and few parts are exterior to the cell few parts are present outside to the cell now we will see each and every part in detail along with its functions and the first part we would discuss about is plasma membrane plasma membrane is also known as cytoplasmic membrane or cell membrane it is the innermost layer of the cell outside to the plasma membrane cell wall is present so plasma membrane is innermost layer of the cell and this is a thin phospholipid bilayer it means it contains two layers of lipid molecules along with some protein molecules and this membrane surrounds the cell and separates inside of the cell with that of outside of the cell and also plasma membrane is selectively permeable in nature we can also say it is semi permeable in nature it means plasma membrane selectively allows molecules and compounds inside of the cell and this membrane keeps proteins and ions inside the cell and prevents the diffusion of these compounds to outside of the cell and plasma membrane is a site for many metabolic reactions like metabolism and fermentation and even photosynthesis generally we observe photosynthesis with respect to plants but plasma membrane of certain bacteria have photosynthetic pigments so through these pigments bacteria can prepare food by absorbing the light like plants and algae and also through this membrane cell must exchanges certain molecules like food and gases and other vital ingredients and this is about plasma membrane this is innermost layer of the cell and it is selectively permeable in nature moving on to the next part is cell wall cell wall acts like a wall for the cell it gives protection and also supports the cell cell wall is middle layer of the cell just now we have seen plasma membrane is innermost layer of the cell it is located inside of the cell wall so cell wall is middle layer of the cell it is located outside to the plasma membrane and cell wall is chemically complex in nature in prokaryotic cells it is made up with peptidoglycans these are combinations of sugars and amino acids whereas in eukaryotic cells cell wall is chemically simple in nature but in prokaryotic cells cell wall is chemically complex in nature cell wall protects and supports the cell and also it plays an important key role for the cell to maintain its shape and structure 
Cell wall also prevents the cell from osmotic lysis. It means cell increases its volume. During those conditions, cell wall stops the cell from bursting conditions. Cell wall differs between the species. On the basis of differences in the cell wall and response to the gram stain, bacteria are divided into two types, gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria. Bacteria which takes a gram stain are known as gram positive bacteria. And bacteria which do not take gram stain are known as gram negative bacteria. So if we observe, the cell wall of gram positive bacteria is thicker than the cell wall of gram negative bacteria. So this is about cell wall. Cell wall is middle layer of the cell. It is chemically complex in nature. So on the basis of cell wall and gram stain, here we have two types of bacteria, gram positive and gram negative. Gram positive bacteria have thick cell wall and gram negative bacteria have thin cell wall. Moving on to the next part is capsule. Capsule is outermost layer of the cell. Not in all bacteria, only certain bacteria have this layer. In certain bacteria, there is outermost surrounding layer known as capsule. And capsule is also known as slime layer or glycocalyx. Capsule helps the organism to attach with the surfaces and also protects the bacteria against dehydration conditions. Because of its slimy nature, capsule also helps the bacteria, bacterial cell against phagocytic cells. So far we have seen plasma membrane, cell wall and capsule. Together these three layers known as cell envelope. As these layers envelope the cell. Where plasma membrane is innermost layer and cell wall is mid layer and capsule is outermost surrounding layer of the cell. Moving on to the next part is cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is liquid part of the cell. Whether it is prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell, cytoplasm fills the cell and also acts like a medium where organelles move from one place to another place. Cytoplasm is thick aqueous semi-transparent fluid. It is aqueous in nature because most of the part in cytoplasm is water. So it is aqueous. Along with the water, cytoplasm also contains proteins, carbohydrates, etc. Cytoplasm primarily contains enzymes, that is proteins. Most of the functions are carried out by these enzymes in the cytoplasm. Along with the enzymes, cytoplasm also contains carbohydrates, low molecular weight compounds, and inorganic ions. Whereas in eukaryotic cells, individual organelles carry individual functions. But in case of prokaryotic cells, most of the functions are carried out by these enzymes. In prokaryotic cells, we know that nucleus is absent. But genetic material is present in the cytoplasm. Along with the genetic material, ribosomes, and inclusion bodies are also embedded in the cytoplasm. And cytoplasm is a site for many metabolic reactions and chemical reactions like metabolism and cell division. Cytoplasm in prokaryotic cells plays an important crucial role. We could observe maximum functions in the cytoplasm. Moving on to the next part is ribosomes. Ribosomes are the platforms for the synthesis and production of proteins. In prokaryotic cells, ribosomes are smaller in size and they are free in form. It means ribosomes scattered freely in the cytoplasm. Whereas in eukaryotic cells, 
ribosomes are bigger in size and there we could observe two types of ribosomes fixed ribosomes and free ribosomes but in prokaryotic cells only one type of ribosomes they are free in form ribosomes composed with complex proteins and rna and ribosomes are 70s type these are subunits of 30s and 50s whereas in eukaryotic cells ribosomes are 80s type here s stands for fatberg unit moving on to the next part mesosomes in prokaryotes in some prokaryotes plasma membrane folds into form structures these structures are known as mesosomes these these are special membranous extensions from the plasma membrane these extensions are usually in the form of tubules or vesicles mesosomes helps the cell in various functions like formation of cell wall DNA replication and distribution of daughter cells even in the function of respiration in addition to this mesosomes also helps the plasma membrane to increase its surface volume and moving on to the next part is nucleoid recall the term prokaryotes means nucleus is absent in prokaryotic cells but genetic material is present this genetic material is present in the region of cytoplasm that particular region is known as nucleoid region here chromosomes are small circular shaped haploid it means unpaired chromosomes and are not bounded by the nuclear membrane just now we have seen genetic material is present in the region of cytoplasm that region is known as nucleoid region and along with chromosomes prokaryotic cells also have additional structures these are known as plasmids plasmids are extra chromosomal dna molecules even plasmids are small circular shaped double stranded dna molecules present in the cytoplasm plasmids are not involved in the reproduction process along with bacterial chromosomes as plasmids already separated from bacterial chromosomes but plasmids independently participate in the dna replication in the next part we will talk about is filamentous appendages appendages means attachments these are protein appendages embedded in the cell envelope just now we have seen cell envelope includes plasma membrane cell wall and capsule these protein attachments are embedded in the cell envelope here we could observe three types of attachments they are fimbriae pili and flagella observe over here this is fimbriae fimbriae and pili both are structurally same whereas fimbriae are smaller structures than pili this is a structure of flagella bacteria move from one place to another place with the help of this flagella fimbriae are small bristle like projections from the cell surface fimbriae enable the cell to attach with other surfaces and to other cells in the similar way pile or long tubular like projections from the cell surface even pile also helps the cell to attach with surfaces and with other cells certain bacteria have special structures called f pilus these structures are important in the transfer of dna molecules between two bacterial cells moving on to the flagella bacterial cells can be motile or non motile in motile bacteria flagella is present flagella or long filamentous protrusions from the cell wall 
and flagella acts like a propellers the main function of the flagella is locomotion that is nothing but movement many bacteria use flagella to move the cells towards or away from stimuli that is light food or poison and moving on to the next part is inclusion bodies inclusion bodies are also known as inclusions bacteria have granular structures in the cytoplasm these structures are known as inclusion bodies bacteria stores nutrients in these inclusion bodies and uses during the periods of nutrient abundance food is stored in these inclusion bodies by the bacteria in the form of starch lipids glycogen granules and phosphate granules so inclusion bodies serves like a food store store houses for the bacteria especially when nutrients become depleted this is about inclusion bodies moving on to the next part is endospores we could observe endospores in gram positive bacteria in gram positive bacteria there are special resistance dormant structures these are known as endospores in dormant state it means during unfavorable conditions endospores protects the bacterial genome and also bacteria that are having endospores can survive for longer periods without food and water and also can survive against extreme conditions like ultraviolet and gamma radiations so this is about parts of prokaryotic cells now we will see summary for today's topic prokaryotes are unicellular organisms these organisms made up with single cells these cells lack with nucleus and other membrane bounded organelles but these cells have a piece of circular dna that is present in the nucleoid region certain bacteria have special structures special additional structures like capsule fimbria and flagella bacteria have food stores that are nothing but inclusion bodies and bacteria stores food in these inclusion bodies and uses whenever it needed especially in the periods of nutrient abundance so this is about structure and functions of typical prokaryotic cell in our next video we will be learning about structure of eukaryotic cells please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to get all my latest lessons on youtube thank you